everyone, it's Katie and this is My Life with Beds. Today I want to talk to you about my GI issues or gastrointestinal issues. This is a topic that is really hard to talk about because it can be so embarrassing. It is incredibly frustrating and not a lot of people like to talk about what goes on in their bellies. I wanted to give you an inside look of what it's like in my life with VEDS and my GI system. Some people might have more severe issues than mine. Some people might have less severe issues than mine. I just know for me, it has been difficult to manage my GI system. I'm gonna break this up into maybe like four-ish parts. I'm gonna go through young Katie, like when I was little, and what my GI system did, maybe teen Katie, you know, cause that was a whole experience, young adult Katie, and after I've known about beds Katie, maybe four sections on this. So I remember when I was little, I would throw up a lot. Ironically, when I was maybe fourth grade, I missed the field trip to the landfill because I was sick. And I was really, really upset. Like I wanted to go to the landfill. Later in life, I somehow fell into a job where I became a landfill inspector and I absolutely loved it. I don't know if that's related, but it's pretty funny. I was not allowed to eat like three hours before bed. I had to have bricks underneath the front end of my bed so that I would be sleeping like on an incline. A whole lot of foods went out of my diet. I couldn't eat cheese. I remember telling one of my elementary school teachers that cheese makes me constipated. I remember no tomatoes. I don't think I ate onions, no milk products, orange juice. I stopped really drinking any kind of juice at some point. It just felt like a whole lot of foods were off the table. And I'm sure there were tons of foods that were on the table, but there were a whole lot of them that were off the table. I was throwing up so, so much. It really felt like my elementary school experience was peppered with lots of vomiting and lots of pain. At one point, I remember being in the back of my of my parents' car and I was like yelling that it hurt and my abdomen hurt and I kept wanting them to pull over so that I could throw up but nothing would come out and then I would just be screaming in pain. My grandparents and I think kind of everybody treated it at one point like it might be gas pain. I don't, I think it was my great grandmother told me that if I put my butt up in the air, the gas will come out. So I grew up my whole life going through these attacks by putting my butt up in the air. So silly. I don't even know if it does anything. We went to specialists and of course, like I'm little, I don't remember everything, but I remember going into a scanning machine to see what was going on. And they gave me like a barium swallow. I got to watch it go through the machine and you know, things to amuse a young child who is sitting in a scanner. I thought that the scan showed I had acid reflux, but apparently after that appointment, they told my mom they didn't find anything, but maybe I had just kind of a slow moving system. Now I've heard a lot of people have these problems with pain and their GI system. I wish I knew what my problem was. So teen Katie had all of these dietary restrictions and really did much better than young Katie. I do remember sometimes throwing up things that were still undigested in my system. I don't remember that so much when I was a kid and I don't remember if it was just I wasn't paying attention to it or you know you're a kid and you don't remember everything but when I was a teen I remember throwing up fully undigested material that was must have been sitting in there for hours just brewing upset. That's something I really really noticed. When I was 16 or 17 I had hiccups for seven months. It was unexplained. They did an endoscopy. This was before I knew I had VEDS and we didn't know the endoscopy could be dangerous. It showed nothing. Again, nothing. Nothing ever really showed up on these tests. It just went unexplained. After seven months of having hiccups and consulting with a GI doctor and everything, we just, hiccups were gonna be a part of my life for the rest of my life. I had already come to terms with the fact that that was going to be part of my life forever. And for separate reasons, I became a vegan and I had no more hiccups after that day. It was really, really weird. I didn't notice it immediately. Later that night, my mom said, hey, I don't think I've heard you hiccup today. So I also had issues with bloating and kind of like off and on motility issues. 
that I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to, but sometimes my belly would get really like pushed out like I was, it looked like I was pregnant and then it would suddenly evacuate like everything. But I still didn't pay attention that much to all of my GI issues when I was a teen. It was just a normal part of my life by this point. At some point in my teenage years, a GI doctor did tell me to start eating breakfast every morning, like the first thing I do, even if I wasn't hungry. He said that if I just eat a few crackers or something first thing in the morning, that that would get my system going and absorb any acid that was sitting in there. And it was mind blowing the difference that it made. I, that piece of advice has changed my life. Every morning I wake up and the first thing I do is I eat breakfast, whether I'm hungry or not. And I very, very rarely throw up anymore. It's just made a huge difference. And it is not a medical recommendation, but that is what worked for me to really help with that. So when I was a young adult, the bloating was still an issue. The pain was still an issue. I noticed that when I did vomit a lot, it was either stress induced or it was alcohol induced. You know, when my body starts to throw up, there's no stopping it. It does not stop until I am throwing up just bile for hours. And then after so much dry heaving and dry heaving and dry heaving, I finally fall asleep and it calms down, but it is hours and hours and hours of being sick. And sometimes I really don't know what brings it on. And on those days I like lived on ginger ale and crackers if I could hold the crackers down. But really there were no answers for this. It, there have not been any answers for this. It's only been trial and error. And I think that, I suspect that constipation has had a big role for me, but I've also heard of something called cyclical vomiting syndrome, and I don't know if I have it. Somebody mentioned it to me last year, and I'm super curious on whether that has been an issue for me, and there was just not a name for it. So I think I should preface this with, I know that the biggest risk for me and my GI system is a bowel perforation. And now that I know that I have vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or VEDS, I try really, really hard to avoid constipation at all costs, but it has not been easy. My vomiting has also almost disappeared. Shortly after diagnosis, I did have an episode of severe vomiting, and I do think that that one was brought on by constipation, but I didn't know it at the time. It was maybe two months after I was diagnosed, and I was eating a lot of cheese because I had gone away from my vegan diet, and I was just having a grand old time with those little mozzarella, like, cheese balls. That was a mistake. I'm back to being vegan for the most part. <laughs> cheese is a mistake for me. It is always a mistake. It always will be a mistake. If I decide to eat it, I'm going to regret it later because it really messes the whole system, like motility, it gone, totally gone. Miralax can't combat it. Nothing can combat it. It's just, if I eat cheese, I am not gonna poop for a couple days. That's it. That's all, it's just not gonna happen. So the morning, like I had been eating a lot of cheese and I woke up and I felt really sick and I spent five hours, I think, vomiting before I decided like, I cannot do this. Now I know I have VEDS, the amount of this like dry heaving and it's very violent on my body and I don't think that this is safe. I went to the ER because I couldn't even hold down water. They asked me if I had ever had a bowel obstruction. And that's what made me start thinking that it could be related to the constipation issue. We had always treated my vomiting like it was an acid issue. I took antacids for most of my life. Anytime I was sick, we would give me antacids like Pepto-Bismol or I started trying to take famotidine for it. I get to the ER and they, ha they give me a vomiting bag and everything and give me IV fluids and they give me nausea medicine through the IV. And after a few hours of being at the ER and being stable and being able to hold down water and like finally my body being like, okay, we're good. The doctor came in and he asked me, do you have any nausea medicine left at home? What? My whole life, 
I've been dealing with nausea and no doctor had ever offered me nausea medicine. My mind was completely blown in shock that there was something out there that can help me with this. I was seriously floored. I didn't have nausea medicine at home. I had never had nausea medicine at home. I'd always tried to treat it with antacids and it didn't work. So when this doctor at the ER offered me nausea medicine, it was like the holy grail. It was amazing. I always have it now with me just in case, even though I only have to use it maybe once a year now if that, because I'm so conscious about my body and my GI system and paying attention to it now better than I did before. So managing my constipation really has not been easy at all. I am on Miralax, two doses of Miralax a day now. I take a stool softener every day. I eat a lot of fiber. I drink a lot of water and that is the only thing that keeps me regular now is two doses of Miralax a day because one was not cutting it. GI doctors have tried to convince me I should have a colonoscopy and I'm hoping that somebody just looks at my chart and says, oh wow, this is blah 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 and here's your answer and this is what we're gonna do. But I haven't had a GI doctor yet who has really been able to help me with that. It is weird to come on YouTube and talk about my bodily functions but I think it's important because I know that there are many of you out there who are suffering with these same issues or worse issues, or maybe you had bowel perforations already. And I want you to know that you're not alone. If you have these issues, I think it's really important to talk about them. And I hope it wasn't too awkward for you. I really appreciate you listening. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. It will let you know when I have new videos and would just let me know that you're engaged with this channel. So um, thank you so much for listening and I'll see you later.